Welcome to an NCIXPC Systems Edition of NCIX Tech Tips. We're going to be having a look at the Vesta i5 3350CE. The CE usually stands for Custom Edition and it's some kind of a themed build. So we've done a Mass Effect 3 one, we've done a Diablo 3 one, and this is our Guild Wars 2 themed Custom Edition PC. So once again, we're targeting an attractive, a palatable price point with a gaming system that's going to deliver a great experience in this particular game and a a color scheme that's going to make you feel pretty good about playing on it. Playing it. Playing on it. Bling, bling. Now we've all seen a Shinobi window before, at least I've seen quite a few of them, so I'm not going to spend too much time on the overall case, but let's go through it really quick. So on the top of the case, you've got your dual 120mm exhaust, you've also got your front I.O., so your two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, headphone microphone jacks, your power and hard drive activity LEDs, your power switch and your reset switch. You've also got those red custom strips that I talked about before. On the front, the intake is actually done as you can see here, through the vents in these strips on the front as well as through the bottom. So you'll see if I lift up the case, and we'll probably do a close-up of this, you can see that is where some of the intake's coming from because the feet lift the case significantly off the desk. Now the <clears throat> right side panel, it's just plain white, nice matching white, very clean, very very professional looking. And then on the other side, you find the optional window. So you can either get the regular Shinobi White or you can get the Shinobi White with a window. We opted for the windowed one just because for a themed build like this, having some cool red lighting effects inside, I think makes it look absolutely superb. On the back, we find nothing to write home about, really. There's a 120 or 140 millimeter cooling slot. We've got a 140 mil fan in there now. In terms of I.O., you've got one PS2 port, six USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, DVI, and VGA out using the onboard video. Or, remember guys, you can use those outputs to enable the video transcoding on the GPU while you still are using the power of your dedicated graphics card for gaming. You've also got 7.1 audio out as well as a variety of video outputs enabled by the 7850 graphics card. So it supports up to four displays out at a time, and you can see here what it has built in is DVI, HDMI, and two mini display ports. And let's dive right into it. We're going to open this bad boy up, so the first thing you guys are going to see is once we take the side panel off, there is no side panel on it anymore. Inside we find not, not an overclocking, you know, optimized machine, but this system is all about running cool and quiet at default settings and delivering a decent gaming experience. So we start with an MSI Z778 G43, and what's neat about this board is that it's one of the least expensive boards out there that supports dual graphics. So both Crossfire and SLI are supported on this motherboard in spite of its awesome price. Next we've got a 3470 CPU from Intel. So this is pretty much as good as it gets for an i5 without stepping up to the 3570K, which is significantly more expensive due to its unlocked multiplier allowing for easy overclocking. That said, any Intel Core i5 quad core is going to provide a really decent gaming experience without overclocking unless, you know, you're loading it up with, you know, dual 7970s or dual GTX 680s and then the CPU might become a bottleneck. In terms of memory, we've gone with 8 gigs of Patriot Viper 3 Series DDR3 RAM, and you see the reference 7850 graphics card. What's cool about the 7850 is unlike the CPU, this 7850 is fully overclocking ready. So all you've got to do is download the latest version of MSI Afterburner, which will work regardless of which brand of graphics card ships in your system, and you can adjust all the settings you want in order to get way more performance out of this card. So, Pretty cool stuff. In terms of the boot drive, we've gone with an OCZ Agility 3 120 gig drive, and that was due to a special deal with OCZ, where they allowed us to ship these, these systems with these drives for a very, very reasonable cost. If you want mass storage though, you will have to add it, so you can add as many as eight additional hard drives due to the internal layout of the BitPhoenix Shinobi, which is very, very flexible. For power, we've gone with an OCZ ZT 550 watt power supply. This is one of the best value, fully modular, 80 plus bronze power supplies on the market. The only regrettable thing about it in this system is that it doesn't necessarily match the Guild Wars 2 color scheme. However, it's not as far off as you guys might think because there is a hint of orange in the Guild Wars 2 color scheme, which is why that front logo on the front of the case is orange. 
And uh, I think I forgot to mention when we were doing the external that we're using a masked optical drive. So there you go. There's that. And you can see the top fans have orange LED lighting. And when you take that red Bit Phoenix Alchemy strip that's down at the bottom here, and you reflect it off the yellow label on the power supply, you sort of end up with orange, sort of. That's, that's how it works, right? So for the cooling, we're using a Cooler Master Hyper 212, and uh, Hyper 212 Plus, rather. And this is, again, it's all about value with these 999 systems. This is pretty much the best heat sink you can get for the price. It runs really cool, really quiet, and I think that pretty much wraps it up. All we're left with is a couple fine details about our Guild Wars 2 Custom Edition PC. So number one is, I don't know if you guys noticed this before, but the side panel on the Shinobi window here is actually kind of a smoked glass, which looks really, really good with the red internal lighting. I mean, we got that shot earlier of the window. And the other thing that I always like to tell you guys is what I would spend a couple extra bucks on if I was going to try to upgrade this machine, because until you start spending, you know, two, three, four thousand dollars, there's always something that you could change to make it a little bit better. So I would definitely add a storage drive. A storage drive is going to be a must. You're going to want to install your games there. 120 gig SSD is fine for your OS and your key applications, but if you want to, you know, your entire game library and all your videos and music, if you don't have like a separate server or a NAS to store it on, you want some storage in here. The other thing is I might upgrade that video card to maybe a 7870 or even a 7950. 7950s are really coming down in price and it takes a lot of video card to bottleneck an Intel Core i5 quad core, no matter what the clock speed is, without overclocking. So adding a little bit more graphics horsepower would definitely give you an even better gaming experience. Thank you for checking out our NCIX PC episode on our Guild Wars 2 Custom Edition system. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips.